Hi, I'm Christine Wu, VP of Strategic Client Solutions at Time Inc. here at CES with the ARF. Is that a new role? It is. So it's taking the advertising strategy group and merging that with what was previously called sales development. And then I've created a new role underneath that brand development. And when I started, they said to me, well, Time Inc. isn't really, you know, a consumer brand. And I said, but you've got a house of consumer brands. I always have a People magazine in my bag. See? <laughs> Thank you. And, and I think part of that is when we think about it, right, no one's talking B2B, B2C anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just about talking to people. So print is one aspect of it, but it's the storytelling that we bring, you know, to the marketplace and the different platforms or the ways that we're, how we're transforming the company. 2016 CES, how did you get here? Tell your story. Marketing and consumer insights has always been my passion. And I love innovation. Yeah. And so when I was at Pepsi, I actually um, worked on a Skunk Works team, bringing new platforms into the company on, around dairy and protein. You know, and what you find from the center, it's really difficult to launch something new. It's better for, for a company that large to just buy. And so that's when we decided to buy Naked. Well, the funny thing is, so I think this was maybe, gosh, 14 years ago, we had looked at dairy and getting into milk, and you can see what Coke has done, you know, and I see that, and it really, you know, kind of kills me, because I'm like, oh, we looked at that 15 years ago, I can't believe we didn't launch that. And when I went to Sony, it was under Sir Howard Stringer, and um, a woman named Susan Jervix who said to me, you're at Pepsi, and you're trying so hard to get your brands next to pop culture. Come create pop culture with me. And I said, well, that's fascinating. Let me go do that. Sony, obviously, is inextricably linked with technology and media and all that sort of stuff. Launching Sony United, the one Sony message, so you can see where this is going yes. for my for my career today. Yes. And really enjoy that. And a lot of it was, how do you bring the di these disparate divisions all together? How not much of it is product them. solutions, and how much is leadership, would you a say? A lot of it's leadership. Mm -hmm. Because you're never going to know their products as deep as they are. Mm -hmm. What you do have in this, you know, in a privileged seat is that bird's eye view across so you can see how can, people can work together. I then left Sony a couple years ago with the restructuring and did startups. I think it was so challenging because you could see what the vision is. The re you're just constantly trying to figure out resources and there's just never enough. Your career sounds breathtakingly perfect. Did you ever, um, were there any stumbles or of course. any failure along the way? Failure is actually how you learn and you have to be at a company that is willing to take risks right because failure is, is always going to be part of that journey and so I was lucky to work at a company like Pepsi that was all about risk taking. We launched a brand called Philosophy in Whole Foods and it was the first protein beverage with this new aseptic packaging. It was a great <laughs> idea but you know what we just couldn't make it work through the distribution system oh. and after two years in Whole Foods I mean the turn just wasn't there. How did you deal with that? I learned early in my career that if if the ship is sailing, you need to, you know, and or it's sinking, you gotta get get off of it. It was harder when I was younger, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. it really feels like it's it's part of you. It's and personal. I think it's personal. Yes. But I think the last eighteen months working with entrepreneurs, right? You realize it's really about their vision and my philosophy has always been like, okay, let's learn from that, but let's move on. How do you do that? Companies are shifting, right? You think about IDEO. It's more about mm -hmm. iterating. Mm -hmm. It's okay, so that didn't work. So let's think about, and I think technology has brought a lot of that because you, yes. you see, you know, version 2.0, 3.0, whatever yes. that is, right? That's what I'd like to bring to my group and my department, which is leadership and also that ability to take risks to know that it's okay and feel failure is going to be part of it. Mm -hmm. How did they find you or how did you find them? Through uh, a mutual friend Chismet? from Pepsi. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, hit it off with with Mark Ford, who's the EVP of Sales and Marketing, and Joe Ripp, who you know, yes. um, is the CEO. It was less about an interview, but talking about a philosophy about the consumer. And they said, come with us and be on this transformation journey, and that just sounded exciting. What pieces do you think you're going to borrow in this new role? So understanding from the startup Not environment, right? How do you how do you get around those processes, mm -hmm. and how do you make them more flexible? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big piece. Just having worked at such amazing companies in the past, leadership. Is, is something that I'm trying to bring there in development, people oh. development. When I met with my team, it was clear to me that people want to be told what to do, but I also want to develop them so they feel empowered mm -hmm. and they can lead themselves. Culture is such a big part of yeah. it. And so if you think about some of the values that we would bring, trust and transparency, that's what you're starting to see in this new building. And you're starting to feel that energy, mm -hmm. right? And there's always people that are going to opt out, mm -hmm. right? But then there's other folks that come in that bring new blood. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants you to succeed. 
And so how do you do that? And we need to show them that we can better engage with those mm -hmm. consumers. People are absorbing information these days in snippets. Yeah. Everything's shorthanded. Twitter's only 140 characters, Vine's six seconds. So how do we communicate these messages in a shorter amount of time? But on the other end, there's lack of emotion and empathy, right? And so you're going to see brands really try to connect with Trust. consumers yeah. yeah, in this long-form epic sort of stories. Because stories are at the end, end of the day, how people connect. That's where we need to really think about that as a company because we're storytellers. What's your perspective on creative these days? Now I think we need to be a little bit more cognizant about the different platforms because those different platforms allow you different ways to communicate, right? What we're thinking about is how do you That's have these scale. custom conversations, right? One-on-one -on -one at scale. Look back at 2015, um, what would you say your biggest success was? So I worked on a lot of startups in 2015 and helping those guys get to market I think was really exciting. Um, and just being able to institute change um, in my department. Because I think CMOs want to have a discussion about marketing. Yes. How is it affecting the consumer, right? And then, yes. fine, you can sell me later, but I want to have that conversation. I want to yes. make sure that you understand what my challenges are. Yes. And that's where you can get really deep with some of our clients. And how do you um, reconcile what's going on with measurement? We often talk about that it's the data. Right? But it's really not. It's what you do with the data yes. and it's the insights that you derive from it. Do you think that women have made progress over the course of your career or and or what do you think that we need to do to, to be even more impactful? I was on a panel yesterday and a couple women came up to me and they said, thank you so much for showing that there can be women that are leaders in organizations. I was at the White House a few weeks ago. Megan Smith was there and she was yeah, talking a lot about really it's the visibility. We need to be smarter about if we're showing ads, how do we showcase women mm -hmm. that are leaders in an organization? Like how do we make sure that that visibility is there? Mm -hmm. And how do we support other women? Because what you see is what you perceive. And so if you've never seen a woman scientist, you know, leader, yeah. you don't think that can be done. Last quick question is a prediction for 2016. I think one of the things that you're going to start seeing is this whole this whole notion of frenemies, right? So what I might have perceived as a competitor in the past will be a partner in the future because the media landscape is changing so quickly, the marketing landscape and consumer behavior is changing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it's going to be partnerships because you can't get there by yourself. Yeah, I'm going to be keeping my eye on what you're going to do in the next 11 <laughs> months. And we'll see you here at CES in 2017. Great. So, thank you so thank much, you Gail, so much. for having me.